Hey, the Lord is so good. All right, while, we, while we're receiving that, we're going to remind you also three weeks from last night begins our surge conference. Dr. Shriller will be with us on Saturday night. Uh, then I'll start my message on Sunday morning, and every service is going to be different. Sunday night, Pastor uh, Suleiman Manzor from uh, Pakistan, the, uh, the uh, pastor to the Taliban, they call him, is going to be with us, and Charles Martin's going to be with us, and uh, 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 LaDonna Taylor is going to be with us and uh, uh, Pastor Hernan Castellano is going to be with us and it's going to be just a powerful time. We're also going to have morning sessions so on uh, Monday through Thursday at 10.30 a.m. morning sessions and the first two days LaDonna Taylor is going to be doing a school of healing. And uh, uh, Greg, you know how many miracles have been happening in her meetings. Just been absolutely phenomenal. So we are very excited about that in Jesus' name. Everybody say amen. amen. I want you to open your Bibles. Anywhere is fine. It's all anointed. <laughs> Woo. Last night we had some guest pastors here from uh, Wasilla, Alaska uh, The actual original home church of, of uh, Sarah Palin and uh, Wasilla Assembly of God We're going to be sending a group of young people up there this summer For a missions trip, uh, outreach to the, uh, the natives up there To the, uh, uh, Indi or the um, Eskimos up there And uh, we're looking forward to that just lift your hands for a moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want you to just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost for a moment. Oh, y'all can do a little better than that. Lord, let your anointing fall. God, anoint every mind and every spirit to receive your word right now. And God, give us a breakthrough. Transform our lives in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said... Amen. By the way, as, uh, as we open up to John chapter uh, 13, I also want to put it in your spirit that immediately following the service we have, if you're a first-timer or a new-timer, you've been coming uh, recently, we have a, a thing called meet and greet, where a chance for you to meet some of the staff and some of the leaders of the church upstairs right after the service. We have some snacks for you, and we'd love to spend some time with you and just get to know you in Jesus' name. John chapter 13, beginning with verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God. Every say, Jesus knowing. Jesus. We're going to help me out a little bit better now. Say, Jesus knowing. Jesus. We're going to begin today. We're calling the church on to a 21-day spiritual cleanse because the fact is in, in our everyday life, junk gets in our, on our lives. And we're going to use this scripture as a foundation. I'm going to give you a lot of word today, so we're going to move fast. So get your spirit man ready. But we are going to, we're going to use this as a foundation. But I want you to say this first. Jesus knowing. Jesus One of the things that Dr. Cirillo has taught us over the years is Jesus always operated from a position of strength because he operated from a position of knowing. He knew who he was. He knew where he was going. He knew what he was called to do. And when you know that you know God's plan for you, you know you can walk in strength against any circumstance. You can stand in the boldness and confidence. Remember we talked about a few weeks ago the difference between confidence and arrogance and that God has called you to walk in confidence. The difference between confidence and arrogance is when you, arrogance is when you begin to take responsibility and claim for what you, you have. Confidence is simply you know what God has invested inside of you and you stand unwavering in that. And we are to be a people of confidence that walk boldly into the world knowing that we have power and authority in the name of Jesus to cast out devils, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. Come on. That we do not have to succumb to the, to the culture of the day and to the spirit of the day, but we can change it. Yeah. We are to be a generation that changes the culture, doesn't adapt to it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, okay. So now watch what we are to be. See, that's so too often we're being influenced by the culture and we're being transformed into the image of the culture. See, you are either one who transforms or you're the one that's transformed. You're either one that nobody stays, nobody stays exactly the same. You're either influenced by those around you or you're the one that influences those around you. And God has called us to be the ones that influence those around us, not be changed by those, by the culture and society around us. 
When you look at history, you look at church history, you look at revival history, and I know I'm going a little fast right now, but you look at revival history, one of the hallmarks of true revival was not just they filled the pews, it wasn't just they got crowds, it's that they fundamentally transformed society. And the thing that we're missing here in America today, we're not even filling the pews, let alone transforming society. We look at the church, and the church is becoming more and more like the world instead of the world becoming more and more like the church. Jesus walked in a position of strength because he knew. Someone say, he knew. He knew all things, that God had given all things into his hands. Oh, gosh. I try, I'm not even supposed to stop on that verse. That was a, like a pass-through verse. I haven't even got... That's a speaker to me. Come on. All things. God's looking for a people that will walk into their cities, walk into their neighborhoods, walk into their jobs, and begin to recognize that God has given you authority. Huh? Well, we better be careful with this, Brother Steve. Well, we better be careful with that. Well, we better... No, God has put all things in your hands. Shukur, on Sunday. He understood, so he walked from that position. It also empowers you to walk not only in confidence, but in humility. Because when you know who you are, you don't have to push it down other people's throats. Huh? Michael Jordan walk in here and, you know, I, I sit there and say, man, you stink at basketball. Do you think he's going to walk away going, oh, no. <laughs> No, he knows who he is. He knows who he is, and he can walk in. He can, he can choose to walk in the humility of it because he knows who he is. In fact, one of the signs that someone doesn't have a real revelation of who they are, no matter how talented or gifted they are, is when they're always trying to push and, and use that as a superiority over you. Come on, amen. Y'all need to follow some example over here. <laughs> huh? Now watch this. So he rose from the supper and laid, this is uh, the last supper. He rose from the supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. i got to grab this thing right there. He took off his outer garment. Now that was an expensive garment. It was a fine garment. The guards even, uh, the Roman soldiers even cast lots to get it. It was a one-piece garment. It was a very expensive garment. He took off the outer garment and only wore the undergarment, a smaller garment. That was the kind of garment that a slave wore. So he, de- he undressed his royal garment and now was standing in a slave garment. But not only that, then he also took a towel and he took the towel and he girded himself with the towel. Now, not even the Jewish slaves, I was doing some research, not even the Jewish slaves would do that. Only the Gentile slaves would be required to gird themselves with a towel. And so now he has a towel so that he could wipe, because he's about to wash their feet, so he could wipe their feet. He is now presenting himself in abject humility as a servant. And can I submit something to you? You will never enter the power and the understanding and revelation of true spiritual servanthood until you have a revelation of who you really are. Because until you have a revelation of who you really are, there's that inside thing that's always fighting for posture and position. You might serve to get recognized. You might serve to try to get a promotion. Come on, come on. You might serve to make sure your name gets put in the bulletin. But only when you know that you know who God's called you to do can you take off the glory... Humble yourself in the eyes of the people because you're no longer concerned what they think about you. You're there to express the love of Jesus. And so then he he said, verse 5, After that he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with his towel, which he was girded. Then he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, are you washing my feet? I mean, can you imagine? Here's his Lord, his Master. In such humble state. He said, Lord, are are you washing my feet? I'm not, you know, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this. Now, I want you to think. It looks like Peter is being spiritual, but he's being selfish. He's having a hard time accepting 
what Jesus is doing. Now put it in your spirit. Because Jesus right there was absolutely shattering Peter's concept of authority and leadership. I'm not worthy that you do this, but there's a part of Peter, because we see it coming up here in a moment. There's a part of Peter that's saying, wait, 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 wait. I got this authority thing. I, you're the king. I'm the, I, I'm the, I'm the, you know, you're the master. I'm the, I, I'm the disciple. You're, you know, and there's a certain way we're supposed to relate. Why are you doing this, Jesus? You're done messing with my paradigm of how authority is supposed to work. Because you remember the kingdom of heaven is an opposite, upside down kingdom. Because whatever you want, do opposite of what the world says to do, and that's how you get it. You want to get, God says you got to give. You want to live, God says you got to die. Come on, amen. You want to have authority, God says you need to be the servant of all. <laughs> So verse 7, Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will know after this. Can I put this in your spirit, guys? There's a lot of stuff Jesus is going to try to do in your life that you just don't understand when it happens. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. <laughs> what I'm doing, you ever go through certain, Lord, why? Lord, why? I don't understand. I, he says, I know you don't understand now, but you will later. Parents, you all know what I'm talking about. You all deal with that with your kids. You know, 13 years old, and they try to come home with one of those big old gauges in their ear that begins to put a big old hole in their earlobe, and you're saying, you don't want to do that. Because when you're 40, you don't want someone to be able to drive a Mack truck through your earlobe. But at 13, they don't understand. And they think, oh, you just, you don't understand my culture. And no, no, you don't understand. But when you're old, you will. You will understand why you don't want to have tattooed on your forehead, I love Betty. Because at 13, Betty, oh, baby, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. At 16, you don't even remember her name. That's another thing also true understanding about spiritual authority and spiritual leadership. Sometimes our spiritual authority, one thing Greg can tell you with around Brother Cirillo, you know, we have had to learn to trust God and trust the servant of God. Because there's sometimes we'll be in meetings and Brother Cirillo says, Greg, do this or... Great. <laughs> you know, I've been in a meeting. I've been, I remember this one meeting, and it was, it was before you were doing your job, and, and he turned to uh, uh, Larry Rovat in, in the meeting, and he was his senior vice president at the time, and he turned to Larry, and he said, and, and la there's a lady down in a wheelchair with all these tubes in her and everything, and he said, Larry, pull those tubes out of her body. You come down here and pull them tubes out of her body. <laughs> There's sometimes our spiritual authority and leadership understand things that we don't understand. I don't understand why they're doing this. I don't understand that. There's many things we don't understand now, but as we grow, we will understand. Yeah, and Jesus knew, hey, you don't get this yet, Peter. I, under I, I understand you don't get it, but you will get it later on. <laughs> And then Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. I just told you you don't understand. You shall never wash my feet. And again, I believe Peter right here is thinking he's being really spiritual. You know, I'm going to be more spiritual than all these others. You know, you don't wash my feet. Peter was just being arrogant. The Lord wouldn't do something that he didn't need done. Oh, boy, it's quiet in this Presbyterian church. All right. Shoo. It's amazing how, how much time we spend questioning God. How much time we spend questioning what He's doing in our life because we don't understand yet that we needed this thing done. How many, time, how many bad circumstances? Some of you that have been serving the Lord for a long time, you, don't, you know, you can look back and say, there was some bad stuff I went through, but when I now see what God has done in my life. I didn't see it at the time, but now I see it. And, let, and often, so often, we are resistant to God in the process. God, no, don't do it. No, don't do it. Don't do that. 
And Jesus came, kind of slapped him beside his head, and he said, and Jesus answered, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. So then Simon Peter, he switched from being one side of of self-righteous to another side of self-righteous. He said, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. (laughs) All right, wash me better than everybody else. You know, when you read the story of Peter, it's got to be encouraging that God can use you and me. Because this guy was full of himself. (laughs) And Jesus said, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet, but is completely clean. And you are clean, but not all of you. Because he knew that there was, uh, you know, what was going to betray him. He said, you are clean. Then Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 says this, that he might sanctify and cleanse her, talking about the church, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water of the word. The feet speaks of your daily walk. And here's what Jesus is saying. He's saying, hey, listen, I've cleansed you already. My word has cleansed you already. But your daily living has gotten some dirt on you. And I'm I'm telling you guys, I don't care how hungry you are for God, how spiritual you are, how much you're going after God. The fact is, simply living life in this fallen world, we get polluted by the stuff that's around us. Come on, you may not be a smoker, but it doesn't take long to be around some smokers. You don't even have to be talking to them or hanging out with them, but simply in the same room with them. And then when you leave there and go home and your wife says, you smell like smoke. Because you picked up the odor of what was around you. And we get, we pick up the odor of what's around us. The junk gets in us. It's kind of like, kind of like my computer going on the internet. When I get that brand new computer, man, it's lightning fast on the internet. And I don't care how many times I do the delete and and clean the cookies out and everything. It seems after about a year, that computer all of a sudden is like slow. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, it just starts crawling. It, it used to boot in 30 seconds, now 30 minutes, and I'm going, come on. <laughs> all these things, all this stuff gets in behind the scenes, all this junk, all this clutter. All the, I didn't last for it. I didn't look for it. I didn't want it. I didn't invite it. But it somehow got on t- to my computer. Same thing with our lives. You didn't necessarily look for it, but you're driving down the street and there's a billboard with somebody dressed in a way they shouldn't be dressed. There's a statement that somebody made. You sit there and you walk into a store and you hear some foul language. You hear a dirty joke. You turn on television. You're trying to watch a decent program and the commercials make you want to get saved. Come on, amen. We get polluted. Everybody say we get polluted. We do. We get just everyday life pollutes us. Everyday living in the natural. That's why a lot of people go on and physical cleanses because you, we eat foods and everything, but there's toxins and there's, you know, all, all chemicals and all this stuff. And it builds up, it builds up, it builds up. And once in a while, you just need to go flush that stuff out. And spiritually, we got to get those times. We have just gotten polluted and we get bogged down in the spirit and we, and we get clouded in our minds and we don't even recognize because it was a slow process. It wasn't because we intentionally went out to do some evil, horrible, wicked, ungodly thing. It's simply that we were around in a fallen world and got tainted by the atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. Come on, you ever been in an atmosphere? You ever, you ever gone to a movie that you know, was rated PG and you thought it'd be clean and all of a sudden these foul words and using the Lord's name in vain starts coming out and you walk out saying PG you understood it stood for pretty gross you get offended you get like why well I didn't I didn't expect that I didn't go have you gone like the movie's gotten good and you're kind of into it and then all of a sudden this junk comes out and you just kind of feel sick and you walk out just feeling tainted and feeling just a little yeah you know I just got spewed on I remember back, I thank God for the internet uh, uh, filters now. They're so much better. But I mean, back in the 1990s when uh, the filters weren't so good. And I I got this email from this supposed lady, a mother, and she said, who's talking about how uh, in this email that her kids were kept stumbling across pornography while doing schoolwork and how she was so, uh, you know, troubled by that. And she found this incredible program that was the best filter program she'd ever found. And I was like, man, awesome. And she said, it's real inexpensive and it works great. And I had young kids in my house. I thought, this is what I need. And so I went and clicked on it, the link to this 
program and it was a setup. And all of a sudden, about 50 porn sites started popping up. I mean, window, 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 window. And it's, I mean, it's the most horrible stuff. And I'm sitting there trying to, trying to click the little box. It's amazing how tiny that thing is. And, you know, and I'm trying to, you ever try to do that when you're not looking? I'm like, I don't. And I said, Carrie, help me. You know, and they're popping up faster than I could get. And I mean, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like screaming at the thing. Go away. Stop, stop. Finally, I said, that's it. And I dove under the desk and yanked the plug out. But those images get in your mind. There it is. I didn't want to see it. I wasn't looking for it. I wasn't searching for it. But bam, I got some dirt on my feet. And I need some washing of the water of the word. And what we're calling the church to a spiritual cleanse. And we're not going to, you know force you to do this and manipulate you to do this. We're not going to check you at the door and send out the cleanse police. (laughs) But the fact and reality is that there's times we just need to clean up. We need to clear ourselves out. We need to stop the negative input as much as we can and spend time in His presence, in His Word, meditating on the right things. God, just wash me out. You're going to be amazed at what begins to happen in your life. Look what it says in Psalms 24, beginning with verse 3. Are you all with me on this? It says, all right, I'm going to hit a few things here. Lord, help me. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in His holy place? He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Everybody say, clean hands. And a pure heart. Psalm 51 verse 10 and 11 says this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Wash me. Ever say wash me. Say it again. Say wash me. God wants us to be clean. God wants us to be purified. God wants us to be washed. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 from the Amplified says this, Therefore, since these great promises are ours, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. Now these are born again believers. They're already, they're already saved. Do you understand? He says, now, now because we have these great promises, let us cleanse ourselves from everything that contaminates and defiles body and spirit and bring our consecration to completeness. Someone say completeness. In the reverential fear of God. We have got to go through processes. We just get to get cleaned up. Turn to your neighbor and say, I think he's talking about you. (laughs) Life will mess you up. And and listen, even some Christians will mess you up. (laughs) Preachers will don't mess you up. You know, when I first got saved, and I was thinking about this this morning, uh, Greg, when I first got saved, I mean, I spent three hours minimum, three hours every single day in prayer. I, I spent every Monday six to 13 hours, usually closer to 13 hours every single Monday in prayer and study of the Word. I just was devouring. I just was in His presence. I, I, I think I watched a total of three hours of television in a year. Never went to movies. And I mean, it was the most amazing season of spiritual growth in my life. It was phenomenal. And I was just, I was hardcore that way. I hardly watched television. I just, I just didn't go to movies because it just didn't interest me. And then I started hanging out with some preachers. And they started, hey, why don't you come out to this movie? Some PG-13. I'll, I'll never forget it. This one preacher, he took me to... Um, Gosh, I can't remember the name of the movie. It was something about family. It was with Steve Martin. It was some vile, ungodly thing. And I sat there, and it had every kind of innuendo in there and every kind of perversion, every kind of thing. And I'm sitting there watching this thing as a young Christian with these preachers that I respect. And they're laughing, laughing, and I'm going, ugh, 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 you know. And yet, you know, you're sitting there, you're trying, you're trying well, what, what's the right thing? What's the balance? I've been around so many preachers that when you sit and say, well, I'm not so sure about that, they say, oh, man, come on, loosen up. Don't be so religious. 
You know why they think that way? Because they've been so polluted, they don't even see the dirt anymore. It's kind of like the guy with bad B.O. that doesn't even know he has it. <laughs> huh? Shoo. We got to watch several things. We got to first off, watch what we see, our eyes. Ooh, Matthew chapter, man, I feel something's going to hit here in a moment. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. The light, the lamp, Matthew 6, 22. The lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. What are you looking at? What are you gazing upon? What are you allowing into your eye gate? There's so many things you can't, I mean, you can't hardly. Hey, 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 can I talk to some parents here? Come on, haven't you been troubled when you got young sons and you're, you, you have to avoid certain aisles in J.C. Penney's? Because you don't want to take them through the women's garment area? Hello? And if you're not thinking about that, maybe you should. Are y'all hearing me? Yeah. I mean, I, I, I thought about this. I thought about, you know, the stuff they put on the boxes now. The big posters they hang up now advertising undergarment 30 years ago. People would have a heart attack over. There's hardly anything left on them. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And we just, but we, we don't, oh, it's no biggie, Brother Steve. Oh, come on. Loosen up, loosen up. The problem is we've loosened up way too much. Yeah. We don't even have a concept of holiness anymore. Yeah. We've been so, because the images keep coming in and slowly we just become numb to that. Stuff that used to shock our brothers and sisters, our forefathers just 30, 40 years ago. Now we don't have any problem with it. Yeah. And I'm not trying to beat anybody up because we all get there. It's a process of what we keep looking and looking and a lot of this stuff's being shoved down our throats. Yeah. There's a dimension that we can do it. That's why in the spiritual cleanse, we're challenging people, turn off the devil vision for a little while. For 21 days, turn it off. Turn off the movies. Get, get, get off the internet as much as possible. You know, I mean, check your email, do the work stuff you have to do, but otherwise, get, get off of that. Turn off of those things. Shut yourself off for 21 days and try to limit the input of all of that stuff and get, and get your eyes gazed upon Him. Get your eyes set on holy things. Oh, God, fill my eyes. He says this in Psalm 119, verse 18. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. You know, the problem is you have to be spending time in His Word to see wonderful things from His Word. Yeah, exactly. Woo. Hello. Amen. Psalm 121 verse 1 says this, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. <laughs> Proverbs 4.25 says this, Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Kind of reminds me of a young man that was... Uh, really trying to walk holy before God and had come out of a real vile background and uh, was going after God, but really, really kind of battling some lust. And I remember one time we were in a mall and uh, he was walking down and there, I mean, way down the highway was a very attractive young lady and I didn't even notice her, but he noticed her. And he just, he saw her and that thought popped in his mind and he just turned around and said, whoo, just call me Joseph. I'm not even going to look. Pastor Robert Morris of Gateway, I was just reading this yesterday in his book. Uh, he, was, uh, he, he really battled with lust, and he came to his wife and told him, you know, this is the problem in my life and everything. And they were out at a, a pool with the family a number of years ago, and he told his wife, and his wife said, well, I'll stand with you, pray with you. And, you know, and he said, I need you to hold me accountable. And he said he was sitting there in the lounge chair, and a, a, a very attractive Harley dressed woman starts walking by and he's sitting there looking at her watching her go by all of a sudden he felt a pinch on the under his arm right here I mean he said it was hard oh and he looked over and his wife just looked at him and says do I need to pray for you
It's not the first look that'll kill you. It's the extended look or the second look. Oh, don't look at me so. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> what, are we, what are we looking at, looking at, looking at? You know, it's amazing, you know. One of the things we taught our kids, uh, you know, it, we, even with like television and stuff, and I, I love it like Josiah uh, because he'd sit there and, and something would come on the television in a commercial or something or anything, anything or garment commercial or whatever, and I, I, I would just look, glance over and he'd sit there and go, we trained him to look down. We trained him in the mall just to look away, look away, look away. Don't keep feeding your eyes with that stuff. Get your eyes on the Word. Get your eyes on the things of God. And I'm telling you, when you start getting there, it's amazing how much then you stop noticing around you. Can I help you with your marriage? Can I help you with your marriage? When you're out in public, look at your spouse. Uh Uh-oh. So the first day today, we begin today, the cleanse today. Well, Lord, Lord, we're going to spend time and there's these uh, things out there that uh, uh, we have for you printed up with little guidance of what to do and what not to do and stuff. But the first day, Lord, wash my eyes and repent of the things that I've looked at. And God, give me pure spiritual eyesight. Because I want to see the heavenlies. I want to see all the stuff. I don't want all the distraction coming in. Because what you look on, it, 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 you, you, you become conformed into it. Whoa. Second, your ears. Everybody say your ears. Yeah. Matthew chapter 13, verse 15. For the hearts of this people have grown dull. Their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes they have closed. Everybody say their ears are hard of hearing. You know, it's amazing when there's a lot of noise, how hard it is to hear the small things. That still small voice of the Lord. When there's all that noise, you ever gone to a rock concert? So many of you have been there. And you come out and your ears are like ringing. It's just a lot of noise, a lot of noise. And that still small voice, it's so hard to hear that quiet whisper because of the noise that you've been around. And we've got to be careful what we listen to. Psalms 17 verse 3 from the NIV says this. I have resolved that... Whoops, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh... Uh, Mark chapter 4 verse 24 in the Amplified. He said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. Everybody say, take heed what you hear. You got to be very careful what you hear. And I'm not even just talking about foul stuff. Have you ever noticed, and I, I've experienced this in my own life, if I'm around people, and sometimes, you know, at the gym or different places, you're around people who don't use the best language. Right, right. If anybody's here in construction, you know what I'm talking about. Right? right? They don't use the best language. And, and you hear this foul language and you don't use it. You've committed, you don't drink, you don't smoke, you don't cuss. You've committed that you're not going to use foul language. But you hear that foul language. And then all of a sudden a circumstance comes. You, your hammer smashes the thumb or something, something sudden, shocking. And all of a sudden your mind brings those words up to your memory. I told you that last week, a week ago Friday, when the, the ice storm and uh, we, were, we were stuck on some ice and I got out to push uh, uh, Carrie's car and I fell five times really hard. And the fifth time I fell and I smashed my wrist and it, I mean, it hurt. And there in the, across the street is these teenagers just laughing at me. I mean, mock, y'all know what I'm talking about, that kind of mocking laugh. And it is amazing in that moment when I am suddenly hurt and I hear that mocking laugh that all of a sudden I had a list of options that were not godly. A whole slew of choice words in creative patterns came out. Physical motions that I had not used for years were at my access suddenly. (laughs) And I was tempted to say and demonstrate a number of things. (laughs) Oh, don't look at me so spiritual. And it was, it was, it was the grace of God. (laughs) 
shut my mouth and keep my hands and my fingers where they're supposed to be. Okay, some of you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> and I didn't, I did But I'm telling you, it's amazing how much all those options came rose up. And I have found in my own life, the more I'm around people who do that, the more I hear it, the more all of a sudden I have the opportunity to do it. See, what you listen to affects you, whether you think it or not. Yeah. You go into the stores, and they've shown the scientifically. They play that, you know, ridiculous background music in the stores, and behind many of the stores, they have subliminal messages. You can't even listen to it. You, if you strain to hear it, you can't hear it, but your brain picks it up. Wow. And they say, do not steal. We prosecute shoplifters. And you know what they found? Shop, excuse me, shoplifting drops 40 to 60% overnight in those stores. Because your brain is an amazing thing. Your ears are amazing things. They hear things that your conscious mind doesn't hear. And they pick it up and they grab a hold of it. And this is why we also, we have to take heed what we hear, what we listen to. Because guys, put it in your spirit. Get this understanding. When you are around people that teach a philosophy that is contrary to truth and contrary to God, even if you say, I don't agree with it, if you keep listening to it, very often you'll start agreeing with it. See, that's what, that's what the ungodly forces in America have learned. They kept saying certain lies over and over and over again because they understand if we just keep saying it, people will start believing it. We keep saying separation of church and state, the constitutional requirement of separation of church and state. Those words are not in the Constitution. But we keep saying it and saying it and saying it. And even though people say, well, I don't believe that, I don't see that, but they end up believing it over time, and then they start agreeing with it. Huh? They train, I've shared this many times, but it's so powerful. They train CIA agents. One of the things they train uh, the covert operators is how to resist being brainwashed because they brainwash them in order to get information out of them. And how they resist, how they get brainwashed is they go to somebody like Anna and they say, how you doing, Betty? How, how are you feeling today, Betty? Hey, Betty. They speak to her a lie, a small lie, and try to get her to agree with the lie because once she starts believing the lies, they can sow any lie they want. And they tell them, they said, you don't resist it by saying, hey, that's not my name. I'm not Betty. They said, that's not good enough. That doesn't resist the brainwashing. You must open your mouth and speak, my name is Anna. See, that's why I believe the Bible says meditate upon the word, mutter it, speak it out day and night, that you be careful to observe all that's written in this book. you got to keep speaking the truth out, not simply just not simply saying, I don't agree with what they're saying, but me but declare the truth. And that's why the devil has used intimidation through the media to get us Christians to shut up. He says it's okay for you to believe what you believe, but don't open your mouth publicly. Don't make a stand. Don't speak it out. Why? Because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. The words, the words, Jesus said, the words which I speak, they are spirit and they are life. But God created the heavens and the earth with the power of his word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. You've got to open your mouth and speak the word. You've got to take, listen to the right stuff. And you got to be careful who you hang out with. Come on, amen. amen. Stop hanging out with people who keep speaking things that are absolutely false. Oh, whether well, they're my family, whether they're my friend. Take control of the situation. Take control of the environment. Preach the truth. See, that's why you also got to be careful when you're around. The Bible says, mark those that cause divisions among you. You know why? Because if you sit in the presence of a division maker, the seed of division will get in your spirit. They spend time going around sowing bad seed about this person. You said, oh, man, that Anna, boy, I just love her spirit, and, and I love her dancing up here. Oh, it's so awesome. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's, uh, you know. You know, she's doing a little better now. You know, God's, God's working those issues through. What issues? 
And so what happens? They begin to sow seeds. And you say, no, no, I know Anna. I like Anna. I, I think there's nothing wrong with Anna. But then you see Anna on a little off day or maybe she says something. And because that seed was sown into your spirit, you misinterpret what she's doing. And you begin to re Come on, somebody. And you begin to believe a lie because you listen to it. Are y'all hearing me? Shakara Moshande. Yeah, be careful what you hear. Because it'll close your, you got to be careful what you hear. One of the things it'll do, it'll close your spirit to those that God has brought to minister to you and to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Greg, I, I've shared the story a few times publicly, but never in your presence. There was a time back in 1989, there was a, a school of ministry right here in Dallas. Powerful school of ministry. And uh, uh, the ministry had actually opened up. It's a powerful story. The ministry, uh, Brother Cirillo actually had a, uh, a staff member that wasn't able to go. Last minute, Susan, his daughter came to me, and they gave me the free ticket. I wasn't working for the ministry. I wasn't doing anything for them. They flew me out here, and, and, and they put me up in one of the rooms with one of the uh, staff members, Dr. Ashley Rajan. And uh, he's a wonderful man of God from India. And we were sitting there, and someone came to the door, one of the other, one of the people in the ministry, fairly high up, and they were telling a little story about Brother Cirillo and a little debate they had over plane tickets. And it was painted in not the greatest light about Brother Cirillo. Because Brother Cirillo, let me tell you something, he knows how to make a dollar become ten dollars. And the way they shared the story sowed a bad seed in my mind about Dr. Cirillo. Now, every ministry, I had, every meeting I'd been in had absolutely was life-changing and transforming. Every meeting was phenomenal. And the two services before that, I was just getting breakthrough after breakthrough. And then I went into that next session and sat there and could hardly listen to the man speak. And I got to the end and said, Lord, what's, what's, what's wrong? What happened to Brother Cirillo? It's not what happened to him, it's what happened to me. I heard a seed. Come on, amen. I got polluted. Now, that guy probably had no idea that what he was sharing was going to so shut my spirit down. I was a young Christian, only say three years. I, 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 I wasn't able to, I didn't know how to filter it off. I respected this person and I allowed it to influence me in a, such a negative way. That whole service, I got absolutely nothing. But I went out of that service, I repented before God. And the next service, man, I got back to breakthroughs. And do you understand one of the things that the devil has been trying to do to the body of Christ? Yes, we've got a lot of sin out there. And you know we call it in this church. And there's a lot of junk out there. But he's been trying to so pollute the spirits of God's people against spiritual leadership that we can't really receive. Come on, we can't hear. We can't hear. We can't hear. The, the pollutions come from within the church. The pollutions come from the world. It just keeps coming. It keeps coming. We see it in politics. The Bible says that we're to pray for our leaders. But half, I know a bunch of spirit-filled Christians that can't, hard, can't pray. They think Barack Obama's the Antichrist and they can't pray for them. They want to see him dead. They want to see him judged. But God said we're to pray for them. Amen. Come on, amen. Amen. But we spend so much time listening to talk radio and listening to people who are not born again spewing stuff. I've done it. That it begins to taint the way we view it. Instead of hearing the voice of God, what we should pray and what we should say, we hear the voice of criticism and judgment and resentment and division and anger and hatred. Are y'all hearing me? And it pollutes us and it taints our vision. Robert, if you'll come. So we got to be careful what we hear. That's why I say, man, turn off, turn off the talk radio. Amen. Turn it off for a few weeks. Shh. Turn it off for a few weeks. Turn off the TV for a few weeks. Turn off those voices for a few weeks. Let's turn them off. And let's, let's find out what God is going to do in us. Let's find out if we can just 
feed ourselves with the Word. I, I found this really cool app for the iPhone and iPad, and I think it's available for Android and stuff. It's called Bible.is. And it's, it's the Bible, audio Bible. And they've got a, a couple of tra- King James and English Standard Version. And they have it dramatized. I like the dramatized. they got music and sound effects and different voices. And I've determined in this time, I'm, I'm going to for sure go through the entire New Testament in 21 days. I'm, 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 and I can read it and listen to it at the same time. And I kind of like that. It's just a different way of doing it. What's going to happen if we could just spend 21 days and just feed our spirit man? 21 days also in this time. Spending, investing in relationship, face-to-face relationship with our family. Come on, amen. We turn off the video games where the action is this way. Go ahead and play a board game where the action is this way. You know, that's all right. Turn on worship music and fill your house with worship music. Fill your car with worship music. Just 21 days. And say, God, just wash me and cleanse me. Get, just filter. Just get all the, the junk filtered out. You're going to be amazed at the clarity of the voice of God that you get to hear. That your eyes become clean. As your ears become clean. You're going to be amazed at, at the peace of God. You're going to be amazed at the restoration in relationships and family. You're going to be amazed at the transformation of attitudes. Because when you get around a person who speaks attitude and you listen to it, we tend to pick up attitude. Come on, amen. 21 days. This started in me a few weeks ago. It started in me as I was watching some news program. And I'm a news hound, okay? I was watching a news program. And I walked out of there and found myself really all riled up about some of the political, economic stuff going on. And I found myself just really riled up. And I said, what is this? And I said, Lord, this stuff is affecting me. I'm not hearing your voice right now. I'm hearing theirs. Come on, man. And then the Lord began to speak to me. He said, it's time to go on a cleanse. All the church on a cleanse. The third thing we do, and I'm coming in for a landing here. Now, I, we've got one for each day. I'm not going to deal with all of them. But also, your mouth. Let me see your mouth. Psalm 17, verse 3 in the NIV says this. I have resolved that my mouth will not sin. Ephesians 4, 29, the Amplified says, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk ever ever come out of your mouth because what you speak guys will be reinforced back to you so in these weeks we're gonna we're gonna shut off the tv we're gonna shut off the uh movies the video games uh the i I, I put on here i didn't word it well pc cell phone ipad games and entertainment i meant that for all of those things you know you're gonna find certainly you'll say i have no time you're gonna find an amazing amount of time you're going to be shocked. And then what to do? Read the Word. Maybe in Romans through the end of, of the Bible, uh, Revelation, that's six chapters a day, or all the New Testament, about 13 chapters a day. Listen to worship music. Pray. Follow the daily cleanse chart. Meditate on the verses. Spend face-to-face time with, with your family. Maybe playing board games or card games is fine as long as it's face-to-face. And get together with others from the church and fellowship. Go to a home group or something. But spend time with them. Get in service every time you have. And just say, Lord, for the next 21 days, leading up, that the last day is going to be the day Brother Cyril is here. Can you imagine the breakthroughs you're going to get in the, in the Fearless Conference when you spend 21 days getting cleaned up and cleared out? Your ear, your spiritual ears, your spiritual eyes, your mind, your heart has been washed. There's, there's restoration already going on. Oh, my Father God, the depth of the breakthroughs are going to be so tremendous. It's going to be an 